Welcome to Misfit Podcast Episode 13. Seth and Drew here with Mr. Cody Mooney. Hi, Cody. How you doing, man? What's up? What's up, guys? Um, we're going to chat with Cody today about his experience at regionals this year, uh, what his plans are leading into next year, but uh, first we'll go with a couple of uh, housekeeping items. Seth, you want to tell him about training camp? Yes, we have training camp coming up very soon, uh, July 10th through the 12th, Houston, Texas, 5th Gear CrossFit. Uh, tickets are going very fast. We are near capacity, so if you want to get in on that, uh, sign up as soon as you can. We also have another training camp in Arkansas, Little Rock. What are the dates on that? Um, that's a good question. Coming up also very soon. You're on MisfitAthletics.com. You can click training camps, and that is exactly where you guys can find it. Yeah, I don't even know how to use this site, though, so... <laughs> oh, there it is. I guarantee everyone that comments knows this site better than I do. It is August 21st through the 23rd, and that's at CrossFit Little Rock in Arkansas. We got any guest coaches lined up for that one yet? Um, That's a good question. I don't know. Cody, you going to be there? Probably, yeah. Uh, yeah, so Boom. we're going to have Cody Mooney. Come to most camps. That's we, basically... Right now, we've got quite the guest list for uh, Houston. Yeah, Houston will have Alexis Jordan and Travis. Um, Cody, Cody. Joe Carney. Joe is confirmed. Yes. So... Really, five out of six team misfit will be there, which is pretty cool. And that might be the most we've ever had at one camp, so that'll be good. We've uh, been getting a lot of emails about T-shirts. Um, for the men specifically, we're just about out of T-shirts unless you wear a men's small, um, and you probably wouldn't want anyone to know that anyways. So we have three different new T-shirts coming out. We have... Uh, the Jordan Cook and Travis Williams edition Misfit shirts coming out, and we've got another new design coming out. Um, keep your eyes on the site; those will be up in the next couple of weeks. And we also have two different variations of uh, some snapbacks coming out. So, all the emails about hats and T-shirts hold steady. And we'll be up here in, in a couple of weeks. And while we love that you guys buy a lot of our gear, the Jordan shirt and the Travis shirt are even more important to buy because it's going to help them um, fund their games expenses basically this year. So we're going to get those up as soon as possible so that we can uh, make sure they're taken care of while they train and on their way to uh, Carson. So that's cool. All right, Cody. This is um, this is going to be like one of those 60 minutes interviews. I wish we could turn the lights off, um, you know, have a couple of emotional moments. Uh, let's go through the positive side. Let's go through, take us through what it's like to be on your way to the CrossFit Games for, for two and a half days at regionals. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, leading up to regionals, I obviously had the goals of going to the games and stuff. Uh, getting there day one though, I mean like I couldn't be more happy. I PR'd, PR'd on Randy and then I went through Tommy V. I won my heat, I got, took second. So I mean day one was all good, stuff like that. It was pretty cool. I mean, especially for like the nerves and stuff leading up to Randy, it was pretty crazy being on back, um, here in the crowd and stuff like that before you go out and just being in that heat. I got real lucky. Cause I got, I, mean, I was in the top heat right off the bat, which I was pretty happy with. So being in that heat from the beginning, I mean, I stayed in the top heat all weekend. So it was really cool being with those guys and experiencing that competing. And it was cool just like the atmosphere, just learning how to kind of deal with the nerves and stuff like that. You know, it's not too many days that you get 10 guys, 10 of the best athletes out there in the world going against each other. So it was, it was, it was a good experience. It really was. Um, day two. Uh, day two was all right. You know, I had its ups and downs. Um, the chipper, I don't really know what happened to me on that one. That's what kind of I'm most mad about, I guess you could say, at regionals. I had bigger expectations for myself on that one. I, um, in training, I did it every time, and I did pretty well. And then when I get out there on the floor, I don't know if it was just between nerves or just I wasn't warmed up enough, something like that. It was kind of it was a slow start. I felt like I was like kind of stuck in the sludge a little bit and I couldn't get out of it. Every time I tried to move a little faster, get in a rhythm, it just wasn't happening. But it is what it is. Um, it was it was a good experience. It was like the kind of the first time I tried to warm up on that true form. But I mean, that was that was just, you know, that's just something they throw at you. You gotta, you gotta expect some new things getting thrown at you. So 
Do you just, think it was more mental or physical or a little bit of both? Um, mentally, I think I was pretty checked in all weekend. I'm not going to lie to you. I think that was a little physical. I think because mentally, I mean, you kind of, you guys had the talk with me before. It's like you train all year for this, you know. It's pretty easy to tell yourself when you're out there when it hurts, like you're here for a reason, you know. You think back of all the training you've done while you're there, and it's mentally, it's pretty easy to say checked in. Because like I said, I mean, even in, I, I PR Tommy V, but I knew, like, it, when there's 3, 2, 1, go, those guys, we all ran out. We all did everything fast. I remember getting to, like, eight of my 12 rope climbs right off the bat, and I had to take a step back. and like, I'm like, dude, you're going too fast. Like, you can't hold this pace. And I remember just, like, it pretty hurting a lot more, like, in training. I, like, kind of breached that workout, and I was like, man, that's not that bad. Then out there... I was like halfway through, and I'm like, okay, this is starting to hurt pretty bad. And I didn't, really didn't expect that, I guess. I don't know if it's because of Randy what happened, but it was it was pretty easy for me, I guess, to just tell myself like, don't be a bitch. You're here for a reason. You've trained all year for this. Like, you gotta keep moving. And I tried to do that. I tried to do that my best in that chipper. It was just I don't know physically. I just I don't know what happened. You said what happened in Randy. What did happen in Randy? You said your Tommy V score was based off what happened in Randy. What, oh, what just mean? like I going that hard and having it. That took a pretty big toll on most of us, as you can see. Like everyone was like all jacked up for Randy, and then at the end you go back, and everyone was like, "Whoa, that hurt!" And that hurt pretty bad. That was probably one of the worst workouts I think throughout the weekend. So that took a pretty big toll on us, um, bigger than I expected for Tommy V. But no, it wasn't. It wasn't too too bad. It was. It was good, I guess. <laughs> it's weird. It's weird talking about the stuff. I haven't talked about it really since. I don't know. So, event three didn't go fantastic, but it also didn't like bomb you or anything like no, that. I think I, I think I got like eighteen box jumps, but I mean, oh, I think in training I did it three times, and each one I got like seventy-five plus stuff like that. And I even ran in some vests, tried to make it awkward. I couldn't get on a true form, so I tried to do a few things. Um, Took yeah. 23rd. Yeah, so, I mean, it went all right, I guess. It just not what I expected, you can say. Yep. So then you've got handstand walk, snatch, and Sunday morning, the triplet. Okay, yeah. So the handstand walk, snatch, that went kind of as planned. Um, I did pretty well on that. I think I finished top five in the handstand walk, which I wanted. I, I love handstand walking. It's just a movement that I'm pretty excited about every time I see it. The snatch went as planned. I mean, in training, I did 235, 252, and out there, I did the same exact thing. I went out there knowing a game plan. I mean, I hit 235 pretty easily, so I debated about going a little heavier on that yeah. one, but it was just one of those things, like, if I missed, I didn't want to be like, damn, I should have stuck to the game plan. So I went 252, hit the snatch which was good um it brought me back up from after that chipper put me back in i think third i was leading into third going after day t i was in third going after day two so i mean it was good another day of competition ending and another day i was going to the cross the games and that's kind of what we just kept saying you know like yeah after having some ups and downs each day though i was still going so it was it was, it was good yep and i then, would say from a coaching standpoint um the the biggest eye opener for me in terms of your growth over the last year was event six. Um, I think last year you were trying to kind of figure out what it was like to be out there. And in event six, you were specifically there competing against all the other people. It wasn't like, I'm going to get, my, I'm going to do my workout. I'm going to get it done as fast as I can. Like a lot of people say, you looked like you were out there battling to specifically try to beat certain people. And I think that's what propelled you into a really solid position yeah um that event was you know it was a good one for me it was one that i had to be smart about but it was it was good uh i remember like last year just having those regular strict hands and push-ups you know it was a pretty big weakness for me leading up to last year and then this year i did a lot of them this year and i was kind of hoping for a deficit strict so when i saw it come up i was pretty happy about it um in training it was weird in training i was I did it every time. I think I got like 1240 something or maybe there at regionals and, and training each time I was like 1257, 1254, stuff like that. So I was pretty close and right. moving the chest piece and stuff. So it was, it was a pretty good PR for me. But like you said, I was in that spot where it was like I had Craig Kenny in front of me, stuff like that. And we were kind of neck and neck. 
and we stayed with it throughout all five rounds and it came down to like our both our last set of nine handstand push-ups i remember we had two left and we both got no rep like my foot bent when i pushed up and he did something too so we both got no rep so i just told myself like get back on the wall i know you can do it and i just pushed out two more and then it was pretty cool getting to run to the end and you know and you know the announcers and all that and get my name wrong they call me craig kenny running across the finish line but that's <laughs> fine it was cool though it was it was it was really awesome you probably got a pretty good pump on if they called you craig kenny yeah right? i know right they must have my neck must look real big <laughs> uh yeah but uh yeah so that was like the peak kind of the weekend right there you know things are going the right way after the chipper the chipper was the one thing where it was just like not expected but everything after that though i was pring i mean my weekend was just going up it was just like one of those things where everything was going good and then uh warming up for event seven was kind of like one of those things it was those make or break i think between where i was sitting in fourth and where craig kenny was sitting in seventh i want to say was nine points yeah it was and there was there was like there were three spots for five people. Yeah, exactly. So so the first out of me, Spencer, Austin, Craig Kenny, and Tominski, was it? Yeah, he was still yeah. he yeah, was still. There, he was area. one ahead of me. Yep. So yeah. the first three out of us five to pretty much finish was kinda sitting in that top. And I knew that this would be a harder worker for me. Um I knew every time, sorry, every time uh there you go. the strength comes up, I know it's always gonna be a little weakness, but Hopefully not next year. Definitely won't be next year. But, um, yeah, so uh, I went through, just did my 15 muscle-ups, you know. I sprinted off the bat. I think it was the first time all weekend where I actually sprinted to the first thing. And uh, 15 muscle-ups with a breeze. I got through the first three bars and then hit the 255 bar. And it felt a little heavy and then... I knew, like like you said, it was the first three out of five to finish. So it was like, it was no option to go that fast. I had to, you know, I knew physically I might not have been able to, but I, I was hoping I could. Got the 265 and failed and kind of watched everyone cross the finish line. And it was kind of one of those moments where it's just like, shit, it's kind of the world coming down. You know, you go from third, fourth, all weekend, stuff like that to... I don't know what I even finished, like 10th or something like that. So it was rough. You know, I was able to hit the last squat clean. Kind of just like went down for a second, just realized what happened. And it's rough because cross, it's one of those things where it's not like I'm not playing high school football where it's like, all right, next Friday, we're going to get them. You know, it's like, damn, I have to wait a long time again to get out here to have this feeling to be able to compete, to try to reach my goals, stuff like that. So it was it was pretty rough. You know, the camera guy gets right down in my face, stuff like that. It was just like I wanted to be off the, I wanted to be off the floor real bad, and uh, yeah, it was rough. It was really rough. It was, you know, I didn't want to hang around in the place too much after. I'm not one. Of, I'm not a big guy to cry. I haven't cried in a while, but I mean, I was so angry. Like the minute I left the tunnel, I kind of just broke down on back, and it wasn't because I was sad. It was just like pure anger. It was just like one of those things. It was just like. No, you're riding the high so weekend. You're there. You're in front of people. You're having fun, and it's just like boom, instantly. Yep. So it was rough. Yeah, it was really rough. So we're. It was like a year of frustration melting off you because you, even though you have meltdowns in the gym where something doesn't go right and you scream, you can tell when you train if something is bothering you. You you're able to hold it in and just kind of think about it and you dwell on things more than others. So. It was like I was almost relieved to see you break down like that because you had to, like, push all that out of your system to be able to recharge for the next year. Because if you let that just go, oh, oh well, like, you'd be just sick about it for months and months. So it was like it was almost like, ah, okay, as soon as it's over and you could, like, release it all. I was relieved for you because I knew that it was just like the start of. You know, rebuilding again. Yeah, so for it the was, next season. It was good. It wasn't just then. It was the next few days. Like, I texted, like, you guys. I was, like, having trouble sleeping. Like, the whole next night, I didn't sleep at all. I didn't sleep for, like, the next four days. I was just, it was just, I was having dreams about it. It was really weird. It was, uh, it was a weird experience, but, you know, it's good. It's stuff you learn from, I guess. I mean, Froning talks about it, too. If he, if he didn't fall from that rope climb and win it every year, you don't know where he would have been then. You know, it's just stuff that's going to make you stronger, I guess, in the long run. And, 
you work on your weaknesses and next year it's you don't leave a question you know right so it's what about four weeks now it's been four weeks i think three or four yeah reflecting back on it what do you think you've learned in terms of going into next year like what is it what has it done to you because you're training harder right now than you know yeah, what I mean? I you mean, just seem to be like on it on it on it like all in 100 percent. yeah um i didn't take too much time off you guys told me to, you didn't take any time off it's hard yeah i came back on a monday i had like my softball team like practice we i play in a men's softball league with some buddies we had practice I moved around a little bit i was feeling better than like the next day i was in the gym and uh i've been just having fun right now you know i've been pulling pieces from the blog i've been pulling pieces with my friends and stuff like that i've been on a little i just got on a strength cycle this week but i mean i know what i have to work on this year i know what it's going to take and but the biggest thing that i took from the weekend is that i know i belong with those guys and i know that like next year i'm me i'm gonna leave no question there's gonna be I, i'm i've wanted i've never wanted something so bad in my life and that's why it it was so hard for me at and I was there was I was so angry when it was over because it was one of those things. It was just like I couldn't do anything about it. Right. You know, I had my chance. But you were like mad. That. You were mad because you were going all weekend. Like if yeah. you had just shown up and had a little bit more of what you would call a tenth place weekend, I don't think no, you would have the same fire. It, so I'm glad that the that they were in that order. I'm glad that you know just for your growth's yeah. sake that it went the way that it did in hindsight because if you really do give a shit like you obviously do i mean that just fuels the fire yeah. tenfold yeah and that's why it was so hard because it was like one of those things like we would talk after day one and it's like dude you're going across the games if it ended now you're going their day two is like dude you're still going their event six was like dude you're still going and then you know so that yeah it really fueled the fire when it happened and stuff like that so you know i'm already excited for the next the next year to come i'm excited to train i love doing this stuff i'll do it till it's not fun you know so this stuff i just i enjoy it every day i enjoy being in the gym i enjoy getting out of the gym you know it's it's fitness it will always be a part of my life so i'm excited i'm ready to take the next step and journey so and it's hard like right now i was just before i came up here i was like damn man i wish i wasn't like mass training with some of the guys i wish i was like out with jordan and travis training you know just getting ready for the games and stuff it's hard because it like reflects it we all follow these guys on instagram you see like oh we're games training it's like damn i want to do that bad i want to do that <laughs> you are games training now you're just doing it by yourself yeah i'm just doing it over the court asking you for, for the games 2016 <laughs> yeah oh yeah because yeah. i have all those answers <laughs> yeah so one thing that's probably annoying, but it's a reality, is part of your growth is the fact that you're 20 years old. Yeah, I turned 21 in seven days. You turned 21 in seven days. June 22nd. A lot of the guys that you're competing against are grown men. You may look like a grown man, but you're not a grown man. <laughs> so it's one of those things where your growth, um, it's got to be exciting. I mean, you, you're going to continue to grow. I mean, you could stop training and you'd continue to grow. So the fact that you're going to be training as hard as you are and you're going to progress another year, I mean, that's that's huge. A lot of the guys have almost like a, a clock ticking on them, and yours is in the exact opposite direction. Yours is just opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. So, Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, I'm definitely probably one of the – I was probably one of the youngest guys there, I'd say. I was the, well, yeah, I was the youngest last year too. I mean, I don't hold that as an excuse or anything, though. You know, I hold the same expectations no matter how old I'll be. But it's 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 obviously good to know that I'm still younger than some guys, you know. But it is what it is. I mean, I'm not the guy to say, oh, shit, I'll get it next year because I was only 20. You know, nah. That doesn't bother me. I got a question. Yeah, what's up? I want to know how your mentality changed from last year to this year because – you're competing against the same guys. You know the field. I know they combined Canada East with the Northeast, but there was really, you know, Alex Vigneault was very impressive, and yeah. Paul Tremblay is always, you know, some, someone to worry about. But you knew, you know, you had an edge on most of those guys. So why were you able to, aside from obviously an extra year of training, why were you able to kind of justify in your own head 
that you deserve to be there with those guys? Why did you deserve to qualify for the games or be at the level of a games qualifier? What what was the difference from last year to this year? Um, last year was more of like the eye opening experience. It was kind of the butterflies in the stomach, you know, stuff like that. Just hoping to be in the last heat, like when Matt Frazier walks by, you're like, oh, hey, Matt, stuff like that, you know, kind of fanboy a little bit. Uh, this year, it was more like, like, I deserve to be there. I've trained just as hard as these guys, you know, maybe because I'm not a Reebok athlete or something like that doesn't mean that I don't own a spot on the podium. But how do you know? How do I know? How do you know? How do you get there and know that you deserve to be there with those guys? Because I've put in the hours, you know, I've trained every day i've done the recovery i've done everything that i can to be there i mean i've traded this as not just a sport but more of like a kind of a lifestyle for me i guess and i i deserve it just like anyone else you know that's what i i went in with the mentality of there's 40 guys coming 20 from canada 20 from northeast and we all deserve a spot on the podium but it's going to be the guys that dig deep and want it the most so i deserve it just a spot as much as anyone else there so I went out for the taking and tried to grab it. See, that's where we disagree because I don't think most people deserve a spot on the podium. I think that very few people that were there even expect to have a glimpse at a podium. I think maybe there was a dozen people out of 40 there who would even dream that that was possible for them, but you're one of those people that thinks you deserve to be there. And that's kind of the point I'm trying to make here is that – Let's take Anthony Vasquez, for example. He was just excited this year. He did, he did great for considering yeah, everything that was did. working against him. Did great this year at regionals, had some really good events, was really fun to work with, super excited. But he never once said this year, oh, I hope I get on that podium this year. This year he's, I'm going to go out there and fuck shit up and see what happens and yeah. have fun. You have a different approach. So you're out there saying, I deserve to be one of the top five guys out there and I'm going to go out there and prove it. So my point is that kind of you've taken, it seems to me that you've taken a step in the direction for whatever reason that you are one of the elite handful of guys that can throw down out there while a lot of other guys are just happy to make it to regionals. You're not satisfied with regionals anymore. You're not going to be satisfied till you get to the games. And then when you do get to the games, you're not going to be satisfied until you no. hit the podium at the games. So that's sort of what I'm hinting at, Yeah, if you will. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I mean... I've always been the type of competitive kid. You know, I've never been like the kind to get in your face and stuff like that, but I was always the kind that with well, everything I'm doing, you know, I I want to win just as much as anyone else, you know, even not even more. So, and I always put goals very high for myself and expectations very high and just like you said, you know, so yeah. It's kind of like that what is it the 4-minute mile effect? where they said forever that you couldn't run no one no human could ever run a four minute mile and then banister ran it in whatever 358 359 and then a ton of other people did that mental effect of believing and you know seeing your goal visualizing stuff like that what that can do to you as an athlete because if you showed up at regionals you're, you're not going to accidentally make it onto the podium oh, hell not no. possible there's no, no way so you gotta have that mindset you gotta be confident in yourself you know I train all year for this. I'm confident in what I can do. I'm not going to let myself get out there and do something stupid or take myself out of it mentally. You know, it's I'm out there. I know what I have to do. I know what I want to do, so I'm out there to do it. It's kind of one of those, like, competitive, I guess, competitive nature type things. You know, in football, baseball, basketball, I knew what I had to do when I got out there. And it's just like, can you do it when it's time, you know? Yeah. So, cool. So goals for 2015 slash 16 yeah training goals you're going to compete in any individual competitions what are you gonna do yeah um i'm hoping to compete in some competitions i'd like to maybe try to get into the ecc or something like that you know i think it i think it's really good to get to one or two bigger competitions before you hit the regional level i think it's good to get that feeling you know out of your system some or get used to it at least something like that I didn't do too much of that last year, so this year I kind of want to do it, you know. But for right now, I'm going to, for the next month or so, I'm going to have fun with it. I'm going to start training hard, you know. I'm going to train harder than I ever have just so I can be where I want to be going to the next year because, I mean, yeah, those competitions and stuff interest me, but that's not my main goal. Right. 
my main goal is one goal, and that's to be sitting on top of the podium. On top? Carson, California. All right. Wow. Um, so we kind of led you with the questions in a direction to reflect a little bit on regionals, and maybe that had a little bit of, you know, kind of a negative connotation in there because, you know, you had to talk about what went wrong and event seven and all that. But, I mean, as one of your coaches, after seeing what I saw at age 20 against those people, I mean, you, you have to be, now that it's all said and done, you have to be excited as hell for next year. Yeah, I am. You I know. know, like you, you believed that you could get up there, but then you proved it to yourself for six of seven events. So that has to be exciting. Yeah, it totally is. You know, there's a lot of good that came out of that weekend, stuff like that. And I know it's hard for me to reflect on it because there's that one negative that made it so I didn't go to the games, but there was a lot of good that came out of that weekend and stuff like that. And that's also going to help me train for this next coming season. That's also going to fuel the fire just as much, you know, just because I'm good at something doesn't mean I don't have to work on it and stuff like that. Cause I can always be better in everything I do. So that random Wednesday where you don't want to be in the gym, you everybody else be. is out at the lake or whatever. Yeah. You've got a little bit of extra. You can train and go to the lake and stuff like that. I'll still, I'll we train. can go to the lake and yeah. swim and do I a walk there. I just did it yesterday. Yeah. It was good. It was a perfect fun. day. Cody raced a 45 year old woman. Oh man, that was rough. Lost halfway. No, I swam for like 20, 22 minutes straight. I passed her on the way back. But Wait, did you guys stop when you got there? It was like touch a dock and then swim back. And I was I was struggling. I was it was bad, dude. Like halfway back, a boat passed me and a wave caught me right in the face and I swallowed water. And I'm like, my life is gonna end right now. I made it to the dock and rolled on the grass and I was just like out cold. It was bad. Did you talk any shit to her once? Oh over? no, I couldn't for like 30 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it was funny. Cool. Anything else? No, not too much. That was, that was kind of the first time I've let it out, talked about it a little bit. You know, it was good. Good. We get a podcast and a therapy session in <laughs> yeah. all together. I Keep letting it for out. It. The pain will uh, will help you. Yeah. Agreed. You you won't forget what happened to you. No, this year. I will not. I will not forget that. Wow. Mm. You want to stick around for the uh, next little piece we're gonna do? Yeah. Okay. Sure. What's up? That's I think it. we're done. <laughs> and we're done.